and you know you bring up a very good choice that idea of openness and capability to work with your preferred vendors um, that essentially is why you know the equinix data center is a good fit for this type of application because you do literally have an ecosystem of the best of breed providers um, that enterprises want to tap into and then you have that network uh, layer and foundation so what's happening is a state change is the networks are realizing that here is a new service level that we can offer into what essentially is a marketplace. If you look at the data center as a marketplace with a lot of different uh, consumers of, of network capacity, you now have the capability of selling differentiated services. So, you know, in the past, conversations have often been around how do I reduce costs on my network capacity, which is certainly a huge driver. But in addition to that, there are mission critical applications that um, various buyers, whether they're enterprise or financial services or whatever the case may be, are interested in ensuring the uptime on that. And that's a very different value proposition. That's a different conversation that a network can bring to the table at that point. And let's not also forget that in many cases the network service providers have their own cloud service offerings right so Absolutely. the idea of being able to mm -hmm. allow an enterprise the flexibility of creating a hybrid environment where they're standing up their own applications that they feel comfortable that they want to manage and keep in-house bringing those together with applications that can be run in a virtualized and cloud environment from a carrier and allowing for the um, appropriate prioritization of traffic between those applications that may have API hooks between them. And then ultimately delivering, if you consider that one side of the equation, call that the enablement side of the equation. On the other side of the equation, actually pushing the bits out to the users who need to get to that application. So being able to create that SDN framework that does that efficiently, not only should reduce costs overall, but give you a better way of actually offering new services, reducing costs even on the network service provider standpoint. Because think about it this way, they don't have to provision giant capacity between an Equinix data center and their data center um, and keep scaling it in an inefficient manner. They can suddenly realize efficiencies even on their own network that allow them to uh, to really reduce their operating costs in terms of having to do new CapEx, for example. Uh, operating costs on an ongoing basis, but CapEx uh, on a uh, refresh or upgrade cycle. And we certainly see the just-in-time resource allocation as a, which is somewhat what you're referring to here, as something that is very important. It's not just important, obviously, for the carriers that are providing uh, transport services uh, between an enterprise location and, and an Equinix site, for instance. Uh, but it is, in general, also a requirement for the application because the applications, as you mentioned earlier, they sometimes have behavior that, that changes time of day, an, an event, an external event. We actually have a very large uh, um, a foreign exchange platform that runs as a distributed application on our uh, on, on our Velos platform. And, and there again, you may have a, a particular geopolitical event that causes a, a, a rush or a huge change in behavior by, by end users. And you want to be able to adapt the network automatically and then, and then optimize that, those changes for the, you know, the, as the damping, as the, as, uh, as the network or as that IT system responds and adjusts to that change, then to make sure that it continues to optimize it for, for, uh, for peak performance. Mm -hmm.